Welcome back to the channel. Not sure if you're as excited as I am today, but I will be showing you how you can start creating designs for the new Apple Vision Pro in Fig. So a couple of weeks ago, Apple introduced the new Vision Pro. And although the product will only be released early next year, I started to get super excited about the potential that this device has in changing the way we interact with the digital products on a day-to-day -day basis. I've been in this industry for over a decade now. And what I can tell you is that during all these years working as a designer, there was nothing that had the potential to disrupt the design industry as these new headsets. This is why I think that no matter at what level you are, be it a beginner that is just starting out or a seasoned designer with over 20 years of experience, you should start exploring and experimenting with how you can create user interfaces for these type of devices. Now you don't have to worry only about how your designs look but also in what environment they are being used. So let's jump over to Figma and let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so let's start by creating a frame. Hit F on your keyboard and then afterwards drag a frame and then set this up to the resolution of your screen because the way I thought about this is that this will not represent your designs but rather the field of view of the user that is using the Vision Pro. So in my case, I'm using a 5K display so I'm gonna half that because it's too big and I don't want to design with 300 pixel fonts. So I will half that and that will be uh, my canvas, which is the field of view for the Vision Pro. So I'm just gonna set this up to 2560 by 1440. Now the next step is to change the fill to our environment. So I'm gonna pick image, I'm gonna choose an image, and I'm gonna add an environment. And this will represent the environment in which the user is. And here, instead of frame, I can rename this if I close this. I can rename it to field of view. And now I know that this is the field of view of my user. Now let's imagine that we want to create a website that sells NFT. The first thing I will do is to create a fake logo. So for that, I'm just gonna use a text for now and I'm just gonna name this website, let's say collector. Change the font to something like Monrope. Change this to 32 pixels and let's make it extra bold. And let's make sure that this is wrapping around our text. Now let's create a menu. I'm just gonna drag this. I'm gonna uh, replace this with regular. Decrease the size of the font slightly. And these will be my menu items. And for this, I'm gonna add the following items. Marketplace. Then I'm gonna have collection. Shop. And explore. And what I'm gonna do quickly, I'm just gonna drag another text here and I'm gonna hit Command Option G to create a frame around it. I'm gonna add auto layout, add 24, actually 32 pixels and 24. Give it a fill, just gonna do it black. Just gonna change this to extra bold. Give it some round edges like 10 and that's it. Now we have the menu. Now let's make sure that these are properly aligned. I'm gonna use again auto layout for this. I'm gonna change it to 64. And then I'm gonna grab all of them, auto layout, and I'm gonna keep it at 360. Or actually let's drop this to 320. And this will be the menu. By the way, in case you don't know what I'm doing with auto layout. I have a video that I created previously where I explain how to use auto layout. You can check it out. It's gonna be here somewhere on top. So now let's continue with this. So now we have the menu. What I want to do is to add obviously like a piece of text that will be on, let's call it the landing page. And for that, I'm gonna write, uh, start your NFT collection gonna increase the size of the font to 94 let's say yeah looks good and I'm gonna change this to the extra bold one because I want it to be I 
I want it to stand out a bit. And then I'm gonna grab another text from here by holding Option and dragging. That's how you duplicate. I'm just gonna remove this. And here I am using ChatGPT to generate a bit of text. So if I go here, uh, I will just grab the text that was generated by ChatGPT. Amazing to have an AI that works for you. And then I'm gonna go to Figma and just place the text in here. Now I know this looks messy, but trust me, it will look good very soon. So now we have the text uh, and the title. What I would like to do is to decrease this a bit to like around 100 pixels, increase increase this to around 40 pixels, just so I have a bit, a bit more distance between uh, the lines. So just increase the font uh, uh, height, like the line height. And then I would like to have two more call to actions, one of which will be uh, explore. And the other one, I would like to show the user how it works in case they don't understand what uh, an NFT is or how they can buy it. And for this one, because it's my secondary button, I would like to change the color of it. So I'm gonna go white. I'm just gonna drop the opacity to around 50, I think like 60%, and then change this to, or I can leave it white or I can change it to black. I will leave it white and then I will just increase the opacity to around 80%. And you will see why in a second. So I will just group these. I will put a distance of 32 pixels. I will just grab these two, auto layout again, and this is gonna be 24. Just gonna grab these again. I'm gonna use auto layout and I will have a distance of, uh, let's say 64 pixels, or actually let's increase this to 94. And now things started to take shape. So I have this, the next thing that I want to do is to create a simple card. So I'm just gonna grab a rectangle, draw a simple box, give it some round corners. So this will be my NFT image. I'm gonna grab a text again, just gonna put it here. And this will be uh, technically the name of the um, NFT. So or I can just say call monkey. Change this from regular to extra bold. I'm gonna add another one here, which will be the price. So that will be 0 point, let's say six. And I'm just gonna make the text wrap round. I'm gonna select both. You guessed it, auto layout. And then here, instead of packed, I'm gonna uh, select space between because what I wanna do is I want this text to be responsive with the card. So I'm gonna add it here. And underneath this, what I would like to do is just uh, have like the artist name. Once I have that, I will put it here. I will decrease the font to maybe 16 and uh, just have this as medium. We don't need it to stand out that much. Now I'm gonna grab these two, put them together and let's start also renaming these layers. So this will be text. Let's call it the text. This is the actual image. And now if I grab these two, auto layout again, I'm gonna give it a distance of 24 pixels between them. And I will give it a, a padding of, let's say 32 pixels on the sides and 32 pixels on the bottom and on the top. Now that we have this, what do we need to do to make everything look a bit nicer because now it doesn't look like anything? It's super simple. You grab the card and you just add a fill to it. If you add a fill, add a black fill, let's say for example, you drop this to around 60%. You give it some round edges, let's say 10 again. And here on the effects panel, you just click on effects and instead of drop shadow, give it a black background blur. 
and this will give you this nice effect of like glass morphism. So this is how you actually create the glass morphism effect. Click on it. I will actually increase this to something that is pretty high, so like 60% because I want this to stand out. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the rest of the design, but not before I actually auto layout everything. So I'm just gonna grab these auto layouts that I created previously. So these three are these three elements and I'm just gonna group them together. So the first two, I'm gonna group these because I want these elements to be in the middle of the page. So I'm gonna add an auto layout to these two and then just make sure that they are aligned. And then I'm gonna grab the top part and this one, add another auto layout, make sure that these are centered now. And around them, same as I did for the card, I will just add a padding of 94 pixels. I'm just gonna increase this to uh, 10 pixels. So I'm just gonna add the radius and then the fill will be black. And same as I did previously, I will drop this to around 50% opacity and I will add an effect of the background blur. 24 and I will select here background blur and let's increase this to maybe 30% or 20%. And as you can see, it already started to look a lot better. So we have the design, let's polish it a bit. We're just gonna move it around. I would like this to fill my entire container and I'm gonna make sure that this is set to space between. So I have it nicely spaced out. All of this looks good. Everything is fine except this button. I will just change this. I will drop the opacity to 20% or actually 40%, let's make it perfect. And let's add a stroke. And we're gonna have the stroke as a linear gradient and this will be white. And this will give you that really, really nice and crispy glass morphism effect. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my entire design. So I'm just gonna add here a stroke just gonna put it white inside is fine just gonna select this to linear and I'm just gonna angle it this way perfect and to be honest what we can do is actually change this uh, solid color to a linear gradient as well and if you do that you will see that the design will completely change and it will look a lot better so you can just increase this instead of actually going to zero. You can just say, let's say 30% so it doesn't fall to zero because you don't want this to blend into the environment. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for this one. Click on it, select linear. Let's do it at an opposite angle. And again, same thing as we did for the entire uh, box, like the outer box I'm gonna do here. So I'm just gonna drop the opacity only to 30%, not to zero. And lastly, we need to add an image. So I will change this to image, pick an image, and I will add an NFT, and this is the NFT that I'll add. So this is how it will look basically when you're gonna look through the headset. So till now everything is pretty straightforward, but here is where you have to start thinking about the environment in which this is actually viewed. Because if we go back to Figma, you'll see that, okay, on this particular view, my design looks pretty okay. But then if you change it, you have to make sure that the environment in which your user is will be okay and that your design will still be visible. So for that, what I've done is I grabbed a bunch of environments. So for example, if you were to change uh, the environment with a baseball game, or maybe change this with a bus view, maybe someone is riding a bus and wants to buy an NFT. So just go here, let's see how it works inside the bus. 
So as you can see, this makes a huge difference when it comes to your designs. And you also have to be mindful. For example, here where we have this, if the user looks at something that is a bit more dark, then maybe this call to action will not be visible. For example, if we were to change this to, let's say, a dark room, let's say, let's see how that affects the design that we created. So if we have like a dark room, yes, it's still okay, but you'll see that these call to actions are not visible. So what we can do to fix this is obviously add a stroke similar to how we did for uh, our white button, change this to white, and also I want a linear gradient, same as I did for the last one. And this will ensure that no matter where the user is, he can still see the call to actions that I added on the interface. And we can do the exact same thing for this one. White, linear, and change the angle. And there are a lot of things that are different from a normal user experience because you have to think like this design that I created will be viewed in different environments. But not only that, but let's imagine that they add geolocation and while you're in the bus, you can actually receive, for example, I created here a notification, right? Telling you that, oh, by the way, the thing that you're looking at, it's a gallery nearby and it's 2.6 miles away. Maybe you want to check it out. So the whole user experience is completely different. Then this doesn't need to be here. It can be in a corner. It can be a small widget. There's so many things you can explore. Know exactly what is possible and what's not. But till then, we can still explore some ideas on how we think this could work. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already, as I will start posting more and more tutorials like this on how to create designs for VR, although the VR is not here, but why not prepare for it, right? And also leave your opinions and comments down below because I'm curious to see what your opinion is about this potential new way to create user interfaces. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to hang out with your boy a bit more, then uh, feel free to check out uh, this video over here that uh, I'm gonna put uh, here. So yeah, pretty much that's it. It's a wrap, woo! Yes, now I need to go to the airport. I really need to catch an airplane. See you in the next one.